Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Coming out of the fast break here inside the Cafe Kubal Studios where sports meets that thing called life. 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, 401 South Salina Street, all in Syracuse on the corner of Route 11 and Taft Road at Sweetheart Corners in their drive through in North Syracuse and on 343 Fayette Street in Manlius. I just said all of that without looking at a teleprompter. Joe Adam is going to say it at the end of the show. So, you got it. <laughs> so we're here with the head coach of the St. Anselm Hawks football program in the NE10 NCAA Division II. Joe Adam, a great friend. We met what, about a decade ago, I think, if not maybe a year longer, when he was at Syracuse as the offensive line coach here with the Orange and moved on from there to St. Anselm and has been leading this program. He has believed in faith, in God, dedication, determination, hard work, effort, enthusiasm, and all of that laying in the foundation and creating a culture of winning and consistency and being good men more than anything else has paid off after all of these years of putting in that work. People don't understand. You got to put it brick by brick, cement in there. You don't just have a, you don't just say, I want a house. And then you look at the grass and the house is built. It takes a long time. I know there's a lot to go and I know he'll tell me there's plenty more to be had, but St. Anselm is enjoying one of their best seasons yet. And that is with one of my closest friends. So with that being said, Joe Adam, the head coach of the football program, how are you? Doing great, man. Ecstatic. <laughs> you know, and uh, I can't stop smiling about this season. Well, and that's the thing, you know, and I've been able to follow you, uh, you know, through this season and, and you do so much on social media to really get after it. And, and I love that you share the story and you share the journey. Why is it so important for you to go off on social media and take the time to share these pieces with the community and with people all over the world so they know the journey of St. Anselm? You know, I think it's because of the people that we have here, you know, the, the coaches, the players, I know their hearts. I know the amount of work that they put in, um, you know, and so uh, I'm, I'm just part of their journey. It's, it's kind of what I, what I told the seniors the other day is uh, I, I'm just blessed to be a part of the journey of watching the growth of you turning, you know, going from young men, you know, into, into men uh, and growing up there and, and going into now their communities and being leaders and, and impact people and, and difference makers. So um, that, that's kind of a cool thing. And uh, you know, I'm, I think naturally a head coach is a storyteller, right? So uh, I'm just telling our story and uh, seeing if that appeals, especially in the recruiting uh, life to guys that are blue collar around the country and uh, that believe in the same things and share the same vision that we share. We see behind you the meeting room for the football team. What are your favorite moments from those meetings this season? You know, uh, we, we do some special things in our meeting and, and a lot of it's football and it's a lot of it's concentrated and some of it's like showing some old video clips or having uh, Ric Flair Wednesdays. And, you know, we, we, we do some different do we do some different kind of ironic and, and unique things. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a huge meet uh, for an hour type of guy. Uh, you know, we have we have a different uh, um, student athlete in this society. So I try to meet for 15 or 20 minutes and be very organized and concentrated with what I need to get done uh, via, you know, X's and O's and, and tests and, and, um, and, and film. So we get our work done and then we're efficient at it. And so, um, but uh, we've utilized the, the room a ton with our special teams and our, our front seven meeting and um, the guys have done a really excellent job at it. You said that, you know, obviously uh, today's student athlete is different. So instead of meeting for an hour, you try to meet for 15 minutes and whatnot. How have you adjusted your message to be more concise and more pointed in a shorter amount of time? Yeah, I think the guys know that uh, like we're we don't have time to waste. So uh, we have only limited uh, amount of meeting time. You know, we use different modalities and different learning tools to get our point across, you know, whether it be a technique, a scheme, um, you know, an adjustment, whatever that may be. And then so, um, you know, as a teacher, you you put that in front of them and you ask for clarification and when they've got it and uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. So what we try to tell our guys is, hey, I'm going to coach it once. And um, and if you're uh, an elite player in the room, you'll get it and you'll do it. And if uh, you're not, that means that you uh, your, it's your choice not to do it that way. So uh, we really challenged our guys to that standard and they've 
they've done a really, really good job of trying to meet that. That coming from Joe Adam here, the head football coach at St. Anselm for the Hawks, NCAA Division II inside of the NE10. What can you say about the NE10's competition? I mean, this is a conference that has been poached from realignment, and we've seen teams move on from Division II to Division I, you know, institutions and whatnot. What can you say about the caliber of talent that you face in the NE10? It's been great competition, you know, and so uh, I, was, I was telling our team, like, you know, two of our last three games, uh, we beat Pace, we lose by a field goal, and we beat Assumption 14-12 with four minutes left, and we very well may be playing in the playoffs right now. And so, um, you know, going from six and four to eight and two, and that's this league, man, you know, like you you can be eight and three or three and eight by a couple different bounces. So um, the the league has gotten competitive. Uh, it's a bunch of really well coached teams and and good athletes and difference makers and and older. And so like with with the evolution of transfer portal and grad transfers or or graduate schools, which we have a, a, a sprinkle of, we don't we don't major in that here. You know, we're going up against some teams that have whether it's homegrown or from outside. You know, twenty to twenty five graduate transfers and graduate students in their program. So the rosters have gotten a lot older. Uh, you know, they're more mature. You have more experience. It's different when you're playing football when you're 22 and 23 versus 18, uh, unless you're an elite top 10, you know, freshman in the country. And when we look at, you know, you had mentioned six and four could have very well been eight and two assumption as well as New Haven and Bentley that led this conference in that order. What, when you go back to those games and you look at those losses to those teams, where were those small, maybe unseen elements that you look back on and say, Hey, you know what? Assumption, New Haven, Bentley, we were right there. And here's the things that we're going to focus on from the film as we step forward to make sure that we go from the middle of the pack to the top of the pack next season. Yeah, it's just execution and finish. You know, we 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 spoke a long time ago to win this league. You're going to have to win, you know, three or four games in the fourth quarter and maybe in the final minutes. And it, it ended up in that situation. You know, all all the games except for one. Did we, you know, Bentley's a little bit of an outlier. Uh, we didn't play very well. We had a little bit of a hangover from New Haven. And then to Bentley's credit, they out executed us. But, uh, you know, we turned the ball over and then that that kind of set the uh, the um, the dominoes the other way on that. But, I mean, New Haven and us was a heck of a game, man. And so was Assumption. They were It was toe-to-toe, -to -toe, tight game throughout. And uh, it's just about making those three or four plays. Some some team's going to make it, and and the team that makes those plays is going to end up victorious. And unfortunately, we didn't. So, it gives us a lot of opportunity to learn how to finish, and to hunker down, especially when it's uh, in tight ball games, to stay loose and just do our jobs and execute and try to out execute that team. Yeah, you know, and you spoke about just being a couple games away from being a part of the playoff, and and just you know what that message is like to your team as you step forward here, letting them know, you know, there's, there's a few more steps to take and we're playing football in, you know, mid November and whatnot. So just, just what that message was and what that conversation was knowing that you were in a position to potentially make that NCAA division two tournament, which is a fantastic tournament. And mm -hmm. I don't think it gets talked about enough and I'm going to do my due diligence to change that. But we know that within the, this model, I feel like, you know, the FCS has gotten it right. I feel like division, you know, two in a lot of ways too, has gotten it right that we get to see a true playoff and multiple teams from around the country really say, Hey, if you're going to be the champion, you got to run through a bunch of different places. You were a few steps away from that. So what's the message? Yeah. The message is, is the continue to uh, press towards a market excellence, continue to buy in, uh, continue to develop our, our student athletes. And so um, we're close and, you know, hopefully we'll get some of our seniors back and, and then, you know, add in some mid-year guys and continue to recruit talented freshmen and then develop the, the people on our roster. And so, you know, it's a new year every year and, and, and the transfer portal has now created this, you know, there, there's very little legacy when it comes to college football. Uh, you you have to recreate and remake your roster. 
it's a heck of a lot harder as the GM of our salary cap to do that and make personnel decisions. But, um, you know, we, we've been very lucky to not have a ton of attrition here and have guys that believe in what we do and, and want to be part of it. So uh, I think, you know, it, it, it's all those pieces, right. And um, it's, it's continuing to push forward into, I don't call it the off season. I call it the transition season because in football, there really is no off season. Yeah. And so uh, we're transitioning from, you know, a playing uh, uh, time to a training time. And we, we have some very specific goals and objectives that we want to try and hit both individually and as a, as a team. We look at the uh, NCAA this year, the division to uh, playoff bracket and two teams chosen from the NE 10. How powerful do you feel like the NE 10 is in gathering spots? And do you feel like there's respect when it comes to selecting? I think anytime you get two teams uh, from a league into the playoffs, that's extremely difficult. So that speaks of the regional ranking. It speaks of the talent. Um, and so it's also speaks of the strength of schedule because you, you know, those two teams have to come on either unblemished or go through this league and, and make it that way. So, you know, we feel like there's, there are some battle tested teams that are going into the, the into the uh, playoffs and, you know, they're, they're really, they're really well coached. They're, they're really uh, talented and, um, you know, uh, my hope is that uh, we'll continue to to have multiple teams in in the playoff bracket. And uh, once you get in, who knows, man, it's uh, I've been there before when I was at Grand Valley State. Um, you know, you never know uh, how the run goes. And if you get hot, you got a chance to, to, to do some damage. And you talked about here with Joe Adam, the St. Anselm head football coach here for NCAA Division II inside of the NE10 here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. You talked about being at Grand Valley State in your past and in your in your coaching trajectory and, and time in this profession. Grand Valley State, relevant back then, relevant now. They're a number one seed that has an automatic buy here in 2022. What can you say about being a part of that program and some things that maybe – you take from being there to this day that you can implement knowing that they have been so relevant when it comes to the nation and it comes to the playoff. I mean, great. Uh, you know, it's where, where I got my degree from. So, I mean, um, I'm a, I'm a proud alum. And, and so, um, you know, I still talk to those guys back there and they do a wonderful job. They're, they're a, a much different animal than we are right now, you know, from a, a facility and from a, a finance perspective, but the blueprint is the blueprint, right? It's to it's to find student athletes uh, that believe in your cause and execute, and so um, put put our position put our players in positions to make plays, and they have to make them. And we made more plays than we did probably in the history since I've been here this year. And I think a, a microcosm of it was just the buy in and um, and uh, guys doing their jobs and guys understanding their roles and executing their roles to perfection. So. You know, any it doesn't matter division one, division two, division three, FBS, FCS. You have a team um, uh, comp composed of, of people, and so everyone has a job, and they have to execute that role until the role changes. And so uh, the guys that do it the very best will be the most successful. And that was a big a big difference for us this year. Guys did a great job of executing their role. I take a lot of blueprint uh, from a lot of great coaches. Chuck Martin, Brian Kelly, Todd Colster, um, you know, to name a few. And uh, they've um, they've had a tremendous impact in in how I look at things. Matt Mitchell, um, you know, and, and how I've put this thing together. You know, and, and you said you take from so many different people and, and being a sponge to that. How have your experiences with all of these other coaches and humbling yourself and not being a coach who's like, you know what, I'm going to do it my way and that's it. But being willing to learn and being willing to put yourself around other people and be a sponge, just what you think that's done to develop you as a leader. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to adapt. Right. And so how I coached 20 years ago is not how I coach now. And so I, I found more efficient ways to do things. I've I've uh, understood, you know, uh, cur current student athletes, what their currency is, how to motivate them. Motivating guys today, it was different motivating guys 15 years ago. Some guys are motivated by different levels and different pieces. So um, I think you have to be adaptable as a coach. And it's not going to be, well, this is my way or the highway. You know, in some certain areas, when it comes to discipline and accountability, I am that way. But 
Um, you know, but uh, I think, you know, the, the greatest coaches, in my opinion, uh, have to be a little bit uh, chameleon in that sense. And they have to be a little bit of a thermostat in the room. And what I mean by that and what, what I what I tell guys in recruiting here is the one thing our, I think our coaches do a great job of is being the thermostat in the room. And what I mean by saying that is, you know, there's going to be some tough days when you're an 18 year old male in this society where you're going to have some some valleys. And so we've got to, you know, we've we've got to cool it off a little bit and and we've got to, you know, put 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 our arm around you and and, and get you through those valleys. Right. And then there's going to be other times where if you're not getting it done, we're going to turn the heat up, man. We're going to challenge you to the the very best of your ability uh, until you meet or exceed that standard. So uh, the best part about the guys I work with here and, and what I've learned is that, hey, we can we can be a little bit of both. And I think you have to be a little bit of both. You can't just be one sided. Yeah, you know, and, and with you coming into this uh, program in 2020, didn't have a season technically uh, your seventh year there as you were hired on April 19th of, of 2016. The last time the team had won six games at St. Anselm for the football program was back in 2014 before you got there when the team went six and five. This season you go six and four. Bring me along the road of the last seven years looking back and saying, okay, a couple of years before I got here, they had a winning record. And the last few seasons we've endured one wins, two and three win seasons, four win seasons. How did you get to six and four? And how do you celebrate that knowing that, hey, there's more to be had, but let's take some time and reflect on the fact that eight years ago, this team had six wins and now we've done it again. Yeah, to be honest with you, I'm still celebrating. So, uh, and, and I'm going to continue to celebrate because winning football games in college is difficult. Uh, and so um, I was maybe the only one here now in this staff that had to endure the early days of the cultural change and the, you know, the leadership changes and all those things. So, um, and there are some hard days we've talked about that and, and leaning on my friends and leaning on the the guys and the colleagues that I have here and, and just having faith in the process and, and just putting your head down and being blue collar and all the things that I preach to my players, right. To be doing what I'm doing now. And uh, you know, um, it's a, it's a historic moment. We've had an historic season in a lot of different statistical categories and in, in the things that we wanted to try to accomplish. And it's a, it's a, it's a microcosm of, um, you know, guys believing in yeah. something bigger than themselves mm -hmm. and having a chance to, to, to execute that and be part of that journey has been unbelievable. Joe, you and I have spent so many years together. And in my opinion, there are, few better people when it comes to being a friend and being there you said it is very hard to win football games you're constantly recruiting you're looking at film you're talking to your guys you're dealing with stuff on the field you're dealing with stuff in the classroom off the field family stuff being a father being an uncle being a big brother to a lot of these players that you have yet you always find time to be there for a friend and I know that personally how do you juggle that and how do you find a way to just be a good person and to do that that thing that people don't always take into consideration, which is giving something of yourself that you can never get back, which is time. And I can say that be it two o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, eight o'clock in the morning or 2 a.m., if I've needed you, if I've needed to just lean on something and say, hey, Joe, maybe I know the answer to this, but I don't even want to listen to myself. You've always been there. How do you do it? Um, you work a lot of hours. You have a really <laughs> supportive wife. I mean, my wife, Lisa, she's a rock star. I, I keep telling people that. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm extremely blessed to have her in my life and to have her understanding about, you know, where I'm at and and the different areas I get pulled in. And so, you know, I'm responsible for 120 players and, you know, 10 staff members and, and, and trying to motivate them and keep them going. And a lot of time, I don't have a lot of time for myself. So, you know, when, you know, or trying to get stretched with my family and my grandkids and my friends, and um, I don't know how I do it. It's just part of my DNA, I guess. I've been blessed that way. You know, um, I've been very lucky to throughout the season, be part of a, a Bible study group with a group of guys on Thursday nights. Uh, it's been a huge, uh, a huge piece uh, moving forward for me and keeping me grounded and, and keeping the main thing, the main thing. And so, 
you know, I, I've really tried to challenge myself in my own life to, you know, as a true believer and as a true um, follower of Jesus, uh, to to try to emulate and do it like He would. And so I'm I'm I fall short of that, right? I'm imperfect, but uh, I do I do think I'm trying um, my very best. And so um, our goal is to try to impact, right, and to impact young lives, to impact the people around us, to be there for each other, uh, to not be selfish. And uh, my motto this year has been um, really two things. It's been, you know, it's we, not me. And the guys have really understood that. And then something, you know, going back to what Fred Reed used to say all the time, the standard is the standard. And I, I probably said that a bunch of times this year as well. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm just trying to live those things out on a daily basis. And a lot of a lot of coffee and a lot of energy uh, goes into it. Yeah, I can uh, I can understand that very much so you know people uh, my buddy has a newborn and he was texting me at 2 30 in the morning as if it was four o'clock in the afternoon and i answered him right away and i said i said to his wife i said i keep baby hours so i said i you know if i if i had a child i don't know how much different it would feel to me because i'm up at that time anyways but and and one of the greatest compliments in my life that has ever been given in 37 years i don't know if you knew it when you did it but it was when you had just flown out of Detroit airport. I yep, had yep. flown in and we were talking on the phone and you're like, get out of here, man. You're like, I just missed you like by a half an hour. And you're like, yeah, and I'm just, I said, how, how's everything? And you said, I'm flying around recruiting, you know, uh, doing this, that and whatever, you know, in one place. And then a couple of days later in another place. And then you pause and you went, well, you get it. And, and I said, I was like, you know what, to have a coach say, Hey, you know, the life I live because you live a similar life. It's a huge compliment because, you know, sleep is a beautiful thing I hear. And, you know, it's a nice thing to have. But it was one of the greatest compliments of my life when you said to me, this is all that, you know, I'm, I'm flying around. I'm doing this. I'm sleeping. I'm in this city. I'm in that city. And then you said, you get it. And I do get it. And I think those of us that are dream chasing and dream building and trying to build a path for other people, which is, I think, uh, a lost art with some people when it comes to your dream building is you should be creating a path for other people to come after you and make it easier for them. So, you know, I, I commend you for the work that you've done because I respect it and I do get it and, and I love it. And you are so open about your faith. And in today's world at 37, I never thought I'd live in a world where so many things can be said publicly that I find insane. And yet people are just like, yeah, that's okay. That's how I feel. And there's so much hate on social media, which was made to bring us together, not to separate us, but anything in life can be used as a negative. People don't believe me. Think about a toothpick, pick your teeth, grab, you know, pick up an hors d'oeuvre, poke somebody's eye out. I mean, it's even a toothpick can be a negative thing. So you talk about faith, you talk about God, you're unapologetic about it and you put it out there and you don't say, Hey, you have to believe what I believe but you say, respect me for who I am. I fight that good fight every single day. And Joe, I would be lying if I said to you that I don't feel that when I want to go talk about God, you know, now more than ever, I feel like there's this suffocating air that's going, no, 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 don't say it. I've had people ask me like, you know, how do you, are you scared that your show's going to fail? You think you'll lose Twitter followers if you talk about God? And I said, at the end of my life, if I lose all my Twitter followers and nobody listens to my show, I still get to go home and that's what I'm trying to do. So I would love for you because you are so good about it and so honest and humble about it, why you believe in God, why you talk about it and why in today's world, you're still out there smiling from ear to ear going, Jesus is my savior, whether you like it or not, that's my life. That's who I believe in. And, and then it's not a crutch because that really hit me some kind of way when I had dated a girl and we had talked about faith it was a short dating period, but she was anti-God. And, and she said to me, you know, I get you people. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you know, people like you have to believe in God because you need a crutch to lean on because you can't handle life. And in that moment, I said, wow, you have no idea why I believe. Mm. So I'd love for you to share your story because you're one of those people that even if we don't talk, I always know that you're out there in the world and I'm like, I'm not doing this by myself. 
Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I've I've had a really um it really started in Chicago, uh kind of a spiritual rebirth. And and I'm I like I tell the players, I'm imperfectly perfect just like they are. Uh and uh, you know, I, I mess up all the time. So, you know, I've got good days, bad days. I've got yeah. days where, you know, language is is a challenge sometimes, <laughs> you know, I'm a coach. So um, you know, but um I, I like I've told players who who bring some challenges to me and, and my door is always open for for my guys here because I wear a lot of different hats. Right. And so some of it's, you know, some of it's psychology, some of it's dealing with personal matters and, and real big personal matters. Right. And so I try to per, portray like I'm not here to change everybody. OK, so I'm not here to fix people. And so, um, you know, all I have is a message and it's a, it's a message of having some calm, some peace and some joy in understanding that you can only control the things that you can control. And so, you know, we were not made to uh, lean on our understanding. Right. And and I think that the trouble that we have as society is we think that as humans, we can just fix everything without a higher power. That's just my belief. And so my belief goes in, in God and uh, he provides me the strength every day and the wisdom. And when I'm having trouble, you know, hopefully he'll he'll lead and guide me to where that decision or that that uh, situation has to go. And so um, when you have a, a true and I've told this to a, a number of people, when you have a true uh, fear of God, then nothing in this life or this earth will give you fear. You know, and so I, I truly believe that. And so, you know, looking at, you know, trying to to better my faith and trying to make positive impacts and trying to to do all the things that that were, you know, that at least as followers and believers that were taught to do in the Bible and, and love your neighbor and, you know, um, all, all those those types of pieces. Right. And, and honor your wife and honor your children and bring your children up in respect and love and character. And, and I mean what's so wrong with that? Yeah. You know, and so like, I don't live by the standards of, of our society. I live by the standards that God has set for me. So he's the judge and the jury, not anybody else. So nobody else's opinion uh, matters to me. In the world that we're in, the entertainment and sports world that coincide with each other very much so, for us to say, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of us and they're not the judge of us. Somebody would reply and say, well, you're a coach. You got to win games. You got to get people in the seats. You got to sell tickets as a broadcaster. You got to get listeners. You know, you're doing stand up comedy. You need people to fill the seats. So how do you respond to somebody saying, well, you're in an entertainment society and in a world that likes numbers, but you're believing in God? How do you? You can do both. Right. So like you can execute your plan. Um, you know, remember in, in, in our marriage, in my, in my wife and I's marriage, God is the center point. He's not the side point. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's at the center of everything that I do. He's not the, well, I'm going to do this and I'm just going to bring him alongside when it's convenient. I, I don't believe in that. So, um, you know, he's at the center point of everything that we do. And so as a society, right, um, you know, we're paying people to win football games. I get that, you know, so what do you want to be judged at, right? And different levels judge different things, okay? My goal is here is to, um, is, is really threefold, right? So is to uh, recruit great student athletes, yeah. right? Turn them into men with the platform of football and, and be successful and win football games. Right. And so, like, I don't know, my question to everybody else is, how, how do you control winning and losing? Right. And so, like, you, you have to have that that great team. And so just because you have the highest paid roster, the highest paid coach, does that equal you winning a championship? I don't know. Go ask the Lakers. Right. Go ask the University of Miami. Go ask the University of Texas A&M. So, like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think th those are un. You know, I, I understand that when when money comes into these these decisions and questions uh, that 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 you instantly think that that's going to be successful. But, you know, go look at, at Coach Leipold at Kansas has done an amazing job and, you know, at a place where nobody thought he could win. You know, how about Sonny Dykes at TCU taking over a program and and just finding a way? And, and obviously they've done some some things magically this season. So 
Um, I, I, you know, we don't control the weather. We don't control the other team's personnel. We don't control the referee's decision. We don't, you know, we control the play calls and that's probably about it. Yeah. No, and I love that. And I can appreciate that. Uh, before we close here with Joe Adam, the St. Anselm Hawks head football coach here on Week of Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. To go back to that point that uh, when I was when I was dating years ago and I heard you only believe in God as a crutch because people that believe in God are people in society that just can't handle life. How do you respond to that? Well, I mean, we're not meant to handle life on our own. So when you look at the the struggles of man, it's because we lean on our own understanding and we try to fix our own problems, right? Yeah. So we try to fix our problems with a number of things, drugs, alcohol, uh, pornography, um, you know, stealing, looting, uh, cheating. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Those aren't answers I want to be a part of. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, Instead of, of understanding that we we serve a great God who has made us in the image of himself and uh, that the peace and joy and, and the life is through him. And I'm reminded in my in my study that, uh, you know, the life that I'm living is a testimony for the life I'm going to live when this life on earth is over. And if I have a, a perspective like that, uh, it changes your mindset about what's important here. You know, I mean, and those material things and and those, you know, new flashy toys are not as important as it becomes to, you know, living in a way so that when it's your time of judgment, if you do believe that, that uh, you, you know, you won't spend eternity on the wrong side of the, the ledger. And so, you know, when you when you factor in the, you know, OK, 80 to 100 years, uh, you know, luckily, if you're lucky, uh, average age expectancy in in on this earth versus eternity, um, you know, th those, those things are not comparable. So it's what I believe. And it's why I've tried to, to live my life in a certain way and be a positive impact. And again, not try to change or fix people, but just to share a message that there is another way. And if you, it's your choice, if you choose to do that, and if you want to, we can have more discussions about, you know, with guys here or with people in our community of, of, of understanding what I understand or what I know. And I learned this through our pastors uh, at Life Church here in Manchester, and they've been a huge impact to, to, my, to my life, and as, as well as the churchgoers and the people that are believers. There's such a beautiful thing when you are with a group of believers that believe in the same thing. It's almost like coaching a team that believes in the same vision, right? Yeah. And it's such a powerful, enriching experience when you do that. And so I encourage uh, anybody that, you know, obviously if you're going through some struggles, whether it's financially, health-wise, you know, uh, talk to God about it, man. Pray on it. Um, lean on on his understanding that your own uh, because uh, we are flawed. Man is flawed. That's why leadership is flawed. So, um, you know, man is a flawed uh, animal. And so uh, we don't have all the answers. And we can't pretend like we do because we're going to fall short. Yeah. You know, I, I think one of the simple prayers that I pray that has really worked for me when I listen to God is guide me and guard me, guide mm -hmm. me toward you, guard me from what is not. And as simple as that. And he's been more than clear when he's guided me. And so he's come through on his end. I have to listen. Final yep. piece here. Yep. We've done it before. Rapid fire. You've been great about answering my questions. So I'm going to sit here, put myself on the hot seat. We've known each other for about a decade now, if not longer. So be gentle, Joe. And you got three questions, whatever you got. Whatever you got for me, go ahead. Three questions. Who's winning the Super Bowl this year? Ah, uh, well, at the beginning of the season, I said Buffalo or Kansas City on one side. And I was leaning a little bit more toward Buffalo. And then the Rams on the other side. If I had to pick today, I would, I mean, today's, a, today's a different thing. I think Kansas city is more poised at this point to do it. Uh, Buffalo has been reeling a little bit. So I don't want to count out Buffalo, but I think if I had to look at it today, I'd probably feet to the fire, say Kansas city and the AFC and in the NFC, it's tough, man. You know, there's Philadelphia and there's, and there's Minnesota and I think Minnesota might catch might catch Philadelphia. So okay. if I was doing it right now, I'd probably say Kansas City, Minnesota. Okay. 
What uh so if you're on a deserted island and you get one piece of music, what is that piece of music? Whether it be album, okay. song, what would it be? Man, I'd probably have to say Phil Collins, no jacket required, or Michael Jackson's not thriller album, but Michael Jackson's uh there's an album that he has and dangerous the dangerous album i have that on vinyl and i think i have no jacket required on vinyl so probably one of those two because i learned how to dance from listening to the dangerous album mm -hmm. and phil collins is someone i always wanted to work with in the studio cool uh last question then if uh if you could take a round trip uh uh flight to anywhere in the world uh, if you went to the airport right now, where would that destination be? Italy or Spain. Go see my family. Uh, we have a plan, hopefully, within the next year. I have a plan. My dad said he would. I'm going to go either way. I told him, I said, I'm either going with you or without you. But I, uh, we're talking about going to Italy. So uh, definitely want to go to Italy. want to go to Spain. I want to see my family. And I want to just see where I'm from. And, and I want to do my due diligence because there's some other countries that my family may be a part of as well that we kind of like more recently found out about. So I'd like to go overseas and I like to dig and, and figure things out. There's, there's an inner spy in me. So I, I, and there's an inner Avenger in me. There's, there's a desire for me to get superpowers. And if I don't, then uh, at least for Marvel to let me play one on TV or in the movies. So uh, I, I do like to kind of, you know, figure things out. God has a really incredible way of, unearthing stuff for me and mm -hmm. showing me the way and i feel like he could drop me in italy i would know nothing about nothing and he would lead me down a path and i'd find some like underneath a rock find like my family's name and then find out that on that land is when they built their first house and this is the restaurant they had it god mm -hmm. works in a really cool way with me where yep. i find stuff out that i don't even know how i did and that's because it wasn't just me so italy and spain cool with that being okay. said, Joe Adams, St. Anselm Hawks, get to know them six and four this season, hoping for better and praying for better from here as they move forward. I love the fact that a coach will say, I celebrated and then I move on. And Joe said, no, I celebrated it yesterday, today, and I'm going to keep on celebrating it. So yep. Joe, thank you again for being a great friend, a great believer in Christ, just a good person overall. And thank you for always being there when I need you beyond everything else. You got it, man. Appreciate you.